All right, so today um, we're going to talk about helping 4 members reflect on their projects and their experiences. It's a little bit interactive, um, so hopefully the few of you that are here are strong and mighty and you can help maybe answer some of the questions. Otherwise, I'll do my best I can to fill in the blanks. So um, if you have any questions or your comments, you can either unmute yourself or feel free to um, play something in the chat. So our, again, our topic is helping for members reflect. So hopefully at some point in time, all of you have seen this. We talk about it in new leader training and sometimes we talk about it in other aspects of the 4-H program, but our 4-H program, what makes it different or maybe unique than other youth experience programs is that we are research-based. And one of the research models that we use is called the experiential learning model. And the experiential learning model is divided really into three different parts, um, the do part, the reflect part, and the apply part. And then you can see it's kind of divided into five, five additional parts. And um, we're going to go through each one of those and see kind of what they look like. So first of all, there's this one called the do part or the experience. We are really good at this in 4-H. So what does this look like in 4-H? Um, it's the opportunity to perform or do an activity. So I've given some examples. If you can think of other ways you can... Um, experience something like this, the do part of 4-H, please feel free to put that in the comments. So this might be in a 4-H project where you're making something, maybe at a club meeting, you're playing a game, uh, maybe a 4-H member is giving a presentation, uh, your 4-H members are working with their animals or showing their animals, or maybe even as simple as making a motion at a club meeting. So we do lots of stuff in 4-H, we're really, really good at that. <laughs> So next, the part that we maybe start to struggle with a little bit more is the sharing part. So what happened during that experience? This is where you're gonna talk about the results, reactions, and observations of your experience that you did. So this is maybe where you can help your 4 members discuss their feelings about the activity. So some of the questions that you might be able to engage them in is what did you do? So that might give them the opportunity to actually explain it um, in words versus the hands-on part of doing it. You could ask them what happened. You can ask them, what did you see, hear, feel, and taste? And obviously those questions don't work well for every single 4-H experience. But if you're doing a foods project or if you're experiencing some, some type of new um, atmosphere, you can definitely add some of those questions in. You can ask members if it was easy or difficult, and that gives the opportunity to think about the experience and then share the different parts of it. And there's the reflection process. So what does this look like in 4-H? This is where you might discuss, analyze, or reflect on the experience. Um, this is gonna look at how the actual experience was carried out, what problems or issues might have occurred during the experience, um, what were the member's personal experiences, and what were some reoccurring themes or things that just kept happening? So some questions you might be able to ask them during this process part of the Do Reflect Apply model is, what problems or issues occurred over and over again? Or what similar experiences have you had in other parts of your 4-H programs or when you've done this before in the past? And I'll give you some more suggestions um, here in a little bit. The next, the part that, I mean, even I'll super admit, and I know we have one educator on here, Mary Louise, that I also am very terrible at, is where we get to the apply part of it. This is where we're going to generalize what does this look like in 4-H. This is where you connect those experiences to real life. You want to find trends and common truths, capture their learning with key terms and life skill terms. So some of the questions that might happen here is what did you learn about yourself through this activity? Um, why is a particular life skill so important to your daily life? And how does what you learned relate to other parts of your life? So then taking that, we're back to this do part under this uh, do reflect apply model. Now we're thinking, how does this do then be applicable to other parts of my life? Yeah, and Mary Louise wrote in the chat, it's so hard to remember to do this, and I would concur it is very hard to remember to do this. Um, one tool that you can kind of keep on hand with you if you haven't seen this already, this is the Targeting Life Skills model. Um, it was developed by some 4-H um, workers in Iowa, and the cool thing about this is then going back to some of those questions that we had there at the bottom of that page is, why is this life skill important to your daily life? You could actually say, how do you guys think leadership is important to your daily life? Or how do you think your personal safety and keeping yourself safe is um, important to your life? Or 
how is resiliency? Uh, maybe they need to define that word too important to your life, but it kind of gives you some words to really think about. Um, so you can pre-plan ahead of time, like thinking about what you are hoping the life skills are that the young people get out of the program and then being able to specifically ask those questions. And so um, you can, this is available on our website or if you ask your 4-H educator for it, they can give it to you, but it's a great way for you kind of to remember to help plan your programming or plan the things you're doing to maybe at least reach one of these every time. And they're super easy because some of them um, are sharing. So that would be great. We're already trying to reach that life skill through the do reflect apply model. So there are lots of these that are kind of easy to incorporate. Some of them are much harder like disease prevention, um, but some of them are, are kind of easy. So that last section is that apply section, the now what happens and what does this look like um, in 4-H is where we have the opportunity to apply this to similar learning, um, learning from our past experiences and how it can be useful for our future. So some questions you could ask here is how can you apply what you learned to a new situation and you could even give them that new situation or they could come up with it. Um, and then how can you act differently in the future or how can you apply a skill learned through this activity. So there's a little quiz coming up for everybody. So I'm just gonna kind of go over these five things again. So it's either experience, share, process, or generalize, or apply. Those are the ones that you're gonna answer in this little quiz and you can answer in the chat box or feel free to scream it out if you'd like to. But the do is doing something. The sharing is talking about what you did. The reflecting is having them identify problems, opportunities, and themes. Applying is generalizing it to life skills and other parts of their life or that's the generalized, and then the apply is actually showing how it might work in a new situation. So on the next slide, there'll be um, a little question, kind of like the ones on these slides, and then your job in the chat is to write down if you think it's the um, experience, share, process, generalize, or apply. And the same model is on every slide. So if you can't remember what all of those are, it'll be listed on the next slide. So here we go. What advice would you give to someone who wants to learn more about teamwork? So if you ask that, um, actually, I think I gave you the answers. I No, yes, I did. I already gave you the answers. So pretend it's not there and tell me what advice you would give to someone who wants to learn more about teamwork. Where do you think that would fit? I want to go back and try to fix my slides, but I can't now because we're halfway through this. Well, if you haven't figured out, it's generalized. And so the reason maybe that is, is because that word teamwork is one of our life skills. And so it's that generalized. Okay, so here's another question. What do you plan? What, do you, what did you do to plan your project? That's a very simple share one um, because they basically are just telling you what they did from the beginning. Here's the next one. How will you act differently in the future as a result of this experience? That's the apply one, because it's going to talk about the future. And then here's an easy one, playing a team building game. That's the experience or the do. And then what made this a good project for our 4-H club? So here you're talking about maybe the generalization, the themes, what made it kind of a good way for us to all hang out together. So when Heather commented, I would recommend that they pursue opportunities to work with experts like teachers, coaches, and agents. I would also help them find written digital resources. That would be great. And some of this um, is stuff that is easy to do. And some of it is just asking those questions to make them think for themselves too. So what we're really going to focus on in the rest of this um, uh, workshop tonight is we're really going to focus on this reflect or this share process. Um, once again, I said before that we do a really good job of doing and the generalize and apply is kind of much harder. So if we can at least start sharing and reflecting, um, that would be great. So one of the resources that I'm gonna put online when I post this and that I'll email to Kelly, because all of you are from Niobrara County and ask her to share it with you, um, is that there are some resources that literally have 30 or 40 questions around the share and reflect. I'm gonna show them to you, they're so tiny. I don't expect you to be able to read them, but I think this is a great tool that you could print out and have with you when you go to a 4-H club meeting or a 4-H um, project meeting, and you can just pick a question and just remember to ask that one question after they do an activity. Um, and you can even have people go around in a circle and answer the question. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how you can do that. You can have them pair up with each other to answer the question. But if you can just take one of these questions and actually use it at every single one of your 4-H activities, um, that will really help to start that process of you 
being conscious of the share and um, the processing question so that we're really reflecting on our experiences. So once again, I will provide you with this list. You don't have to write them down. There's a whole sheet. It actually has um, generalize and apply questions too. But once again, I just really wanted to focus on this um, for this training. So other ways that you can process um, with a group of 4-H people um, is have them draw something. Um, you could ask that question and ask them to draw it out where they're not actually maybe sharing it out loud, but sharing it in words or pictures. Um, so if you ask the question, if we go back here, it's one of the share experiences. One of the share questions is, what did you like about this activity? So that's a pretty easy question to answer. You could then have them journal or draw pictures of what they liked. You could have them talk out loud have them interview each other about how things went and then report back to the greater group with one thing that they found. Um, you could even have um, workshop, like worksheets with prompt questions to take home and then you could bring them back and discuss them in the next meeting. Part of the problem there is that you actually have to remember to discuss them at the next meeting. And you can also use debriefing activities. And I'm going to give you a few of those or a few of my favorite debriefing activities. So as I was preparing the debriefing activities, I found this. Um, and it says the experience itself is neither productive nor non-productive. It's how you reflect on it that makes it significant or not significant. So if you think about that, the 4-H experience itself um, could either be productive or non-productive. It really doesn't matter. Um, but if you reflect on it, kids are going to remember it. And then it becomes significant versus non-significant in their life. That was talked about in some, 1979. Think about how much stuff has stayed the same since then. One of my favorite debriefing activity books is called A Teachable Moment. Um, so A Teachable Moment uh, is available in all of your extension offices. When I arrived here about seven years ago, I actually purchased this book for all the offices. So they all should have a, a copy of that you could borrow or go and look at. Um, and if they don't have it, let me know and we'll get it for your office. But it's basically an entire book of activities that help you to debrief or help you to reflect on experiences um, in fun and interesting ways. So we're actually gonna try a couple of them or try to try a couple of them. And so the first one we're gonna try is called alphabet blocks. So on the next page, I'm going to show you um, a slide of ta Scrabble tiles basically. And so you could either do this with um, Scrabble tiles, you could write them out on sheets of paper, you could use dice that have letters on them. And basically the goal is that you throw those pieces of paper out and whatever letters are standing up instead of down, so you could use your Scrabble boards um, for this too. Those are the letters that you're going to use to create words that help you kind of think about something that we've talked about tonight or something related to um, a 4-H experience that you want to think of. So while this training was kind of has been kind of short so far because we don't have a ton of people on, um, the goal is that you just are going to look at these tiles and type words into the chat box from the tiles that help to inspire something that you've learned today or that you've learned through your 4 h volunteer experience. Okay, so I'm going to click the button and then you're going to type some words in the chat box. So some of the words that we've seen so far are loan, um, lead, help, hood, life, um, done, learn, how, own. These are great. So you kind of get the gist of this. I think it's a great way for kids to, um, especially maybe our intermediate to senior level kids because they can probably come up with the words. 
But there's a lot of cool ways that you could use this to talk about things that they learned during um, their, what whatever they did, whatever their 4-H experience that they did was. So maybe it's a project meeting, maybe it's a game at your 4-H club, maybe it's just your 4-H club in general. Um, well, finish, Mary Louise just came up with finish. See, see, she's looking through these letters. But you can see there's, at first I was like, there's all E's and F's and I can't find the letter I'm looking for. But if you spend some time, like it really gives kids an opportunity to kind of do some word searching if they think it's fun and be able to engage in that, so. So we got shine and does. So you're more than welcome to check this out later, but we're going to move on to our next activity. But thank you all for participating. That was great. Um, so the next one uh, we want to talk about is called crossword ending. And I don't know if this one will work very well. So you're going to have to bear with me. Um, but the idea of the crossword ending is that you start with a word in the middle of your page that is... Um, a, a target word or I don't know if the word trigger word is, but a word that kind of is part of whatever you talked about. So if it's your 4-H club meeting, maybe you put leadership up or maybe your 4-H club meeting was about community service. So you put service up or maybe you were teamwork or team building. So you're going to put teamwork up. And then the goal is that everybody comes up with a word that you can um, write off of that word or off of each other to create a crossword. So I'm going to show you the word. And so you're going to try to create a word that then I can crossword. And I'm going to see if my annotation skills on this thing are good enough for me to be able to draw the word that you picked. So we'll see how this works out for me. So does anybody have a word that can come off of reflect that describes something that we may have learned today? Or in 4-H in general, if it, you can't think of something today. Life skill. All right. L I F E. Nice F. writing. Thank you. It looks easy. It's not. Okay. So now you can either choose to have a word off of life skill or off of reflect. Elect. E. I'm going to put it here. L E C E. There. L. H. A. R. What did you, what word did you say? Tell, okay. I'm gonna put it here, cause then I can see. Anybody have another word they wanna add? One of my favorite words is fun. I just like to put that everywhere. Team. Oh, team. Oh, I don't know how to undo my annotation, but I'm going to put it here. T E A M. Communicate. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, A T E. Oh, look over here. C O. All right. So that would also be another fun one that you can play with kids. You could do it in a big group or you could do it, um, have each kid come up and write one or have them work in teams to do it. Um, but definitely a way to talk about the things that you've learned um, in a way where they actually are engaged in the process. So it's not just answering a question, it's actually doing something. I don't know if I can get rid of this stuff at all, so we'll see how this works. My annotating skills, once again, it worked out okay. All right. So, yeah, I have to figure out how to get rid of them now. Um, reset. Oh, maybe it's this. Put it all going. There we go. Okay, the next one is called Food for Thought. Um, this one probably isn't quite as engaging, but it's pretty easy to do. And so when doing this, you will need a table setting and you can either take a picture of a table setting or you can take actual elements of table setting, like a plate, a napkin, forks, a spoon, knives, all of those things. Um, and so 
With this one, the goal is that each one of the different um, items um, mean something different. And so whatever item you get or whatever item you choose, you need to uh, talk about something that, you, that you've learned related to that item. So like a plate, you would talk about things that maybe you're going to put on your plate because of this activity. Um, a fork, you might, things you might want to um, take us, I think it's, hang on, let me, I'm going to show you the thing, and I think I wrote here with you. So a plate, things that might be on your plate after today, um, what kind of things might you like to take a stab at? That would be for um, the fork. Um, what kind of things you want to, to cover in future meetings or activities? That's the napkin for covering. Um, and then what kind of things you are cutting or cutting away your time that may be barriers to doing these kinds of activities, that's the knife. And what things would you like to be spoon fed more or what things would you like help with? So in the chat box, if you want to pick one of those um, different pieces of silverware, so there's forks are stab at, plates are things on your plate, spoon is things you need more help with, uh, knife are things that you want to, that may cut into being, um, this actually being a being su successful or or the napkin is things that you might want to cover based on this. Anybody have one thing they can think of? All right, we're struggling. So maybe a thing you want to take a stab at is asking a question um, after your next activity. Um, maybe something that you want to be spoon fed or get more information on is maybe additional processing questions or different um, activities. A barrier might be time. Um, a barrier might be that you have younger members. That's what Mary Louise put in the chat, that maybe it's hard to do some of this because they don't have the ability to know words or to be able to um, engage in some of those activities. So this is just a way you can bring a whole bunch, you can bring plastic silverware in and just pass one out to everybody after the activity or have them pick their own. And that way they can um, answer a question like, what's one thing that you think you might take a stab at based on what you learned today during your project meeting? One of the last ones is one of my favorites is called picture cards. And this one is super easy to do. Um, you can do it a couple different ways. Um, you can print pictures off the internet. You can take old holiday cards or postcards that you might have laying around. You can actually buy picture cards off the internet. Really the possibilities are endless, but what you'll need for this one is you need at least one random picture um, for every person in your group. And because we're obviously on Zoom, it doesn't work this way, but your goal is to take each one of these uh, picture card and spread them all over table, all over the floor, wherever you're engaged in the process. And then you're gonna ask each person, and you can use this as an intro to get to know each other activity, or you can use it as an activity after the fact. Um, but the goal is that you ask each person in the group to pick one picture from the pictures on the floor, pick it up and then go around the room and have them maybe talk about why they chose that picture and how the picture might relate to something they learned that day. So I'm gonna show you a group of pictures and I ask that each of you um, pick a picture. Then you can just either say it out loud or write it in the chat um, and let us know why you chose that picture. Maybe one thing that kind of reminded you of from what we've talked about today or maybe your volunteer for each experience. Right, so there's a whole bunch of pictures on the screen. I'm just going to pick one and write in the chat which one you picked and what it relates to. or you can talk out loud. Thank you, Crystal. So Crystal picked the ripple effect on the water because I'm guessing that 
she sees her role as a volunteer as having a ripple effect with um, the young people that, sh that we work with. Uh, Amanda picked flowers. I think it's Amanda, let me make sure. Yes, Amanda picked flowers. It reminds her of growing things and helping kids grow on their projects. That's great and rich experiences. Um, James picked um, dice because sometimes it's a gamble on who will show up. Isn't that the truth? Nice. Uh, Mary Louise picked roads because um, her experience and kids' experience allowed them to travel places and meet people and learn from people that they've never met or don't know necessarily before they get there. And Heather picked a hot air balloon to remember to always think about the thousand foot view. Awesome. Um, Joel picked a globe because it's opening eyes to new worlds. These are great. And you can see it's pretty easy to come up with something once you kind of look at the pictures. And it really, for me, I some of those things would have never, ever come to mind, especially like the dice, but I've never would have thought about that. So it really helps also us to gain a new perspective from kids who maybe came up with something that's super fascinating. <laughs> and Heather said the girl with the messy face because sometimes things have to get messy to get done. Isn't that the truth? So thanks guys for participating. Those are all the actual activities I have. There are a ton in this book. I think there's like 50 or 60 different ones in that Teachable Moments book. Um, I don't know if you can, I can't see my own screen, but it's this book. And so once again, it's at your extension office or you can order it online. It's by a lady named Michelle Cummings and Jim Payne. And it works in lots of different situations. Some of the other favorites I have in there, um, one of them is called all my neighbors and it's similar to this game called have you ever and so you all get in a circle with one person in the middle and in the game have you ever which is a great get to know you game you say have you ever went to finland and anybody or have you ever traveled across the pacific ocean and so everybody who has gets up and has to switch places with everybody in um the group and whoever's left in the middle does a new have you ever well in this one you say all my neighbors who learned um a new processing question and so then all those people get up um, or a new whatever it happens to be, and then they switch places and someone new in the middle comes up with something that they learned from that experience, and then they can see other people um, that learn similar things as them. And that's again in the book. Um, one of my other favorite ones is clay sculptures. That might just be because I like hands-on kind of stuff. And so you give everybody some Play-Doh or clay, and it could even be part of your activity where you're making Play-Doh or clay um, for even to donate as a community service project, then you can use it before you give it away. But the, the gist of it is that you make a clay sculpture that talks about similar to the pictures we just did, where you build something that helps you reflect on what you learned throughout the experience or throughout the project meeting or the club meeting. So it's kind of nice because they get to do stuff with their hands. Um, another one that's in there that might be easy to do at a meeting or activity is called Fear in a Hat. And so um, the funny part for this is you can get the most wacky, crazy hat you can find and it kind of becomes a conversational piece. And you have everybody put their fears or things that they're nervous about or questions they have about the topic, which is an easy one to include. A lot of us have questions when we start a 4-H project meeting or club meeting. And you have them put those questions into the hat and then you shake them up and you read all of them to begin the meeting or to begin the activity. And then at the end, you can talk about like, was this something we covered? Is this something we need to cover in the future? Um, what other questions do we have? How is this one question answered? So it kind of gives you the opportunity to maybe even set some goals for yourself as a project leader or with the group of things that may be fears or maybe questions that kids have that you want to cover throughout the, throughout your project experience. Um, and then another easy one is group drawing and it's very similar to some of the other ones we talked about but the idea is that as a group they draw some things that they learned. And sometimes you can do this lots of different ways. You can just have them draw it together and then they have to explain their drawing to the rest of the group and why it was um, reflective of their experience. I've also done it where you have them basically do like a relay race. And so one person may stand at the end and they one person goes out and draws one aspect and the next person comes and draws another one. And it's interesting to me because a lot of times when you start the drawing, you have an idea in your head of what you want to do. And then all of a sudden you have to change things because the next person doesn't have the same idea as you. And they may have added a square where you are going to put um, the body of a person. And so it just becomes an interesting way to have to engage and it kind of creates some laughter and fun um, to be able to make that happen. So that kind of ends today's thing. Hopefully you took away the fact that um, we really 
um, do a great job of doing stuff in 4-H, but we oftentimes don't move on and help kids understand why that doing part of the 4-H program is so important. So there's lots of different ways for you to be able to help them reflect and share. And one of those is just maybe asking a question after every single activity that you do, a small, easy question like, hey, share with your neighbor one of the most things that was the most fun about this experience, or share with your neighbor something that you learned through um, making that cake or whatever it happens to be, or share with the group, depending on how many people you have. Um, or you can go as far as you could add some really cool and fun activities into your different project meetings, like the ones we just did, um, or into your club meetings to really help members think beyond just the, I came to the club meeting, I made a motion, or I came to the club meeting and we did a community service. What does that mean? And how does that fit into our bigger world and really helps us to understand that 4-H isn't just about coming and showing our pig. It's really about coming and meeting friends and learning skills like patience and practice and teamwork. Um, and that really is a great way to apply that to other parts of our life besides just our 4-H experience. So I would love to know if anybody has any questions or things I can help you answer or other things that maybe don't make sense or you'd like to know more about. Otherwise, all of this will be available on the website, including this um, PowerPoint presentation, the recording, and all of the resources that go um, with the Do Reflect Apply model. All right. Well, everybody have a wonderful evening. If you haven't yet, please write your name and your county in the chat box. Um, that way I can make sure you get um, credit for attending this leader training. And I really appreciate all of you coming and hope that you have a wonderful evening and a great rest of your week. All right. Joel, are you from Niagara County also? You are. Good job. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a great evening and we um, reach out to me anytime you need help. Thank you very much. Thanks.